94.5 million miles away, there is a glowing mass of a constant nuclear fusion reaction, occupying a space over a million times the size of the Earth. From it emits potentially deadly radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum. Only some of it reaches us here on Earth, but one small spectrum of it is invisible to the human eye unless you have special equipment, can penetrate the skin and potentially damage the building blocks of our life, our DNA, resulting in the development of potentially lethal cancers. In today's video, I'm going to take on this nuclear giant and attempt to protect myself from its deadly radiation. That's right, I'm making some sunscreen. And what items will I employ in this task? Some raspberries, some shiny rocks, a plant, and a coconut. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. Ultraviolet radiation can be especially dangerous because it exists outside the normal ranges of human vision. So for this episode, I'm enlisting the help of a special tool to extend my vision. I'm here at Death Valley, one of the deepest and hottest places in the world. I need to put some sunscreen on because I'm about to burn and I uh, have a special UV camera to see what exactly happens when you put on sunscreen. And this will allow you to see the actual UV rays and how the sunscreen blocks it. But before I attempt to make my own sun protection, let's look at some solutions that have been used in the past. The simplest solution to block UV radiation is heavy cloth. However, that isn't always ideal due to the heat that often comes with UV exposure. In ancient Egypt, they used a variety of oils derived from flowers, nuts, fruits, and seeds. And to help with burns, they also use ointments made from extracts of rice, jasmine, and aloe vera. The first form of modern sunscreen was made during World War II, when Benjamin Green developed a petroleum-based cream called Red Pet Vet to help protect soldiers from the sun. However, it was red, thick, greasy, and unpleasant. After the war, cocoa butter and coconut oil were added to the mix and eventually evolved into common brands like Coppertone. The 80s is when the dangers of skin cancer and premature aging caused by ultraviolet rays became more known, and some of the more advanced chemical blockers that we use today started to be developed. I was curious about all these methods of sun protection, so I met up with Physics Girl while in sunny California to do an experiment. It's nice and sunny. <laughs> UV is burning. I'm here with Physics Girl, and we're going to be testing some different sunscreens to see what works best with a variety of different chemical ones as well as natural ones that supposedly will also do sunblock. And to help, we have a UV camera to see just what, what the UV rays are actually doing. These are all store-bought sunscreens. I'm sorry that I didn't make any for you. <laughs> I'm going to write down all of the SPFs along here, and then we're going to stripe the actual sunscreen. That's the score I give my bicep. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see if it is just a direct gradation or if some start to make your skin lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Should I rub it in? I didn't think about that. Yeah, I think so. That's how you would normally wear it. Can it is pretty it? reflective. 100. Ooh. I can't wait till you see this footage after. All right. <gasps> Whoa! Eric, come here. Yeah. It's starting to look like a tribal tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> so from what I've read, the other ones generally absorb it, but zinc will reflect it. Okay. So it might be white. You can barely see it? Yeah. Interesting. I think it's a little bit more visible than the four. Huh. With a baseline of commercial products to compare to, now it was my turn. <laughs> Do you want to help here? Yeah. I was going to try on 15 different oils and other items that according to a few articles I found online, had natural sunblocking potential. You're gonna taste delicious. I know. <laughs> <laughs> nice and tasty. Ooh. I've never put so many foods on another human. <laughs> Green tea? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this looks gross. Nice. All right. <laughs> there you are, sir. Does that show up any better? No. Really? Not doing anything, Andy. Huh. The internet gave me wrong information. Oh, it's shocking. <laughs> How do you feel? Uh, sticky. <laughs> <laughs> the end result was a little disappointing. Mostly the effect was difficult to see at all. The most visible ones were ones that were very visible to the naked eye and very visibly discolored my skin. In fact, Diana found peanut butter to be much more effective than anything we tried, as long as you're fine coating yourself in it. Actually, it's actually effective. Very. That's so great. Wow, peanut butter works pretty well. <laughs> However, these ones were supposed to work by reflecting UV. And on camera, you can tell there is some reflection from it, but it's difficult to gauge. When I do my final test, I'm probably gonna need a better way to measure this to be more accurate. 
jealous of how deliciously marinated we both were, Chris wanted to join in too. Just sprinkle that with some turmeric. There we are. <sighs> Ooh, this is organic peanut butter. Ah, yeah. <laughs> May I oh have some uh, paper towels? <laughs> Check out Diana's video, where she goes more in depth into the chemicals used in modern sunscreen and their effectiveness, and if they pose any potential health risks. Derek of Veritasium also joined her in her video, and he also has his own video about seeing the world through a UV camera. Then we had a little fun with the UV camera. Good. including doing some invisible graffiti that you can only see with a UV camera. You'll see that truck in a later video we also shot while there for another experiment we did on making a camera obscura. But more on that later. I was able to learn a few things from our experiment. First, modern chemical sunscreens are going to be hard to compete with. And unfortunately, trying to recreate them is a bit out of reach. For the more natural options, zinc oxide held a lot of promise. While some of the other oils had some potential, it was difficult to assess using the UV camera alone. So I'm going to try a combination of a few of these and see if I can get something that works halfway decent. Let's get started with some coconuts. Mostly to act as the base for my cream, I'm going to extract some coconut oil. However, it also potentially has some sunblock potential. While in the tropics earlier this year, I snagged a couple coconuts on the side of the road. Oh, no, my juice. It smells like coconut. Unfortunately, Customs wasn't too keen at me trying to sneak in some fairly large coconuts. So I had to substitute them for some store-bought ones back home. The first step is to puncture and then drain them. Just a lot. Oh, that's blood. Somehow in even the simplest tasks, I managed to cut myself and then get blood everywhere. Then I bake them in the oven to soften them up and crack them open. Whew. Boom. The coconut. Next, scoop out the meat and grind them up. Which ended up killing a blender in the process. That is a tough grind. Then I strained out the solids through a cheesecloth and squeezed out all the liquid juice. Letting that sit and separate for several hours, the coconut water will separate from the coconut oil, which forms a solid layer on the surface. Next, I collected that and then cooked it for a little over an hour. All right, now we're getting chunks. After straining out all the solid burnt pieces, the remaining liquid should be just the coconut oil. Ow, it's hot. Hot oil. Who would have thought? After cooling overnight, I see a nice solid coconut oil has formed. Now I just need to process the rest of the broth for a usable amount. Of the oils, raspberry seed oil is supposedly one of the best, so I'm going to try and source that myself. First step is separating the seeds from the berries. To help dissolve the berry juice, I'll heat up some water on a hot plate. Hopefully the one covered in beeswax before still works. Whoa, nope, it does not work. Now, just need to press the seeds. At this point, I feel like I've pressed nearly every plant and seed imaginable. But the hand press is still always a huge pain to use. Oh my bleeding. You're bleeding again? Yeah, you just bleed a lot. And to make things more difficult, I actually lost a little lamp that heats the seeds. So I rigged up the heat gun to try and do the job. Next, potentially the most important ingredient, the zinc oxide. As an ore, it can often be found with many other minerals, such as often silver, 
and I've managed to collect a few different ores of it so far in my journeys. I have some spherites. Spalerite. 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 Sphalerite. I've been able to find a few different zinc ores. We have some sphalerite. Grind up some of these rocks and attempt to extract the zinc oxide and make some sunscreen. Then to further reduce the particle sizes, throw them into a ball mill with a bunch of ball bearings and some water. Let it run for a couple days. Then I strain out the solids and boil off the water. Drip, drip. Then I roasted the ore. All right, so I have the zinc ore that I have now calcined in the kiln. I'm gonna get the cuisine art. Doo -doo -doo. So I have the roasted zinc ore. Just gonna add it to some acid here and then neutralize it with a base right here. Should be left with zinc hydroxide. So then roast and get zinc oxide. I left it to react overnight. And the next day, after a few distractions. Ooh, brat. Get in there. Finished up the reaction. Not cool, Dobby. Once mixed with sulfuric acid, any remaining solids are strained using some kale wool. Then the mixture is neutralized using lime and the solid particles that form are collected. Then I roasted the collected precipitate. Unfortunately, one impurity I wasn't able to remove very well is iron oxide. I tried a few methods to potentially extract some of it without a whole lot of luck. So I was able to scrape out some of the iron oxide and get some of the whitest stuff I could find here, but there's other potential impurities like sodium sulfate. So since my chemistry is a little messy and I know I have a fair amount of impurities, things like lead and various forms of sulfur that are not the best to put on your skin, I'm gonna substitute this for store-bought just for safety so I don't burn my flesh off. Another item to help with the base cream is some cocoa butter. Previously, when I made my own chocolate from scratch, it was able to help harvest the seeds of the cacao tree, which we then fermented, dried, and roasted. Lastly, aloe vera. It's probably gonna be the easiest one to collect. Gotta cut it open and take out the gel. Aloe is best known as a treatment for sunburn, so I have the remedy if my sunscreen fails. I'm cutting arms off the squid. There's the aloe. It smells kind of good, almost like fruity. Some people actually eat aloe. Never had it before. You'll have to save some for that later. So gooey. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I have all the ingredients now. I have aloe, raspberry seed oil. I did make a substitution with the zinc because there's some unknown impurities in the stuff I extracted and I'm not super comfortable putting that on my skin. So I'm using some store-bought zinc oxide just for safety. And then on the hot plate, we have cocoa butter and coconut oil. I guarantee this is gonna offer some protection. The question is how much? Nice. Have the completed sunscreen here. I'm gonna try it out and see how it looks in ultraviolet. Ooh. So I'm a little skeptical how well it's gonna show up on the actual UV camera because this is all natural items that tend to be more reflective than actual absorptive. Let's put it on, see how effective this actually is. All right, so. Overall, it feels like sunscreen. It smells like coconut oil. And uh, on the UV camera, it is somewhat visible, which is kind of what I was afraid of. So now we're gonna do a actual practical test, put some on and some other volunteers and lay out in the sun and see if there's any visible difference in darkening. And I also have a UV meter, test it out and see uh, how well that actually works. Use some actual science. It feels a lot more like sunscreen now that I'm rubbing it in. I feel like I'm starting to get kind of grayed out by it. No discoloration on me. I think it's pretty good. Also, I'm really digging the smell of it. I don't look any whiter than I already am. I guess we won't really know until we see how it happens afterwards, like in the sun. 
Next, I'm going to use a meter to try and measure how effective the sunscreen is and what SPF it actually is. But first, why is UV radiation so dangerous? There are three types of ultraviolet radiation based on their wavelength, UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC has the shortest wavelength, but fortunately never makes it down to us thanks to the ozone layer absorbing it. However, UVA and UVB rays can, and exposure to them will cause damage to our skin. UVB affects the top layer of the skin, causing sunburns and skin cancer. UVA rays have the longest wavelength, reaching the deepest layers of the skin and cause aging, wrinkles, loose skin, and age spots. Sunscreen protects from this ultraviolet radiation by reflecting or absorbing these rays. A little bit more accurate, I have a UV meter here. It'll tell you the UV index of the sun, which is right in my eyes. So my flies are gonna smear a little bit on this plastic wrap and see how much it reduces it by. I'm getting zero. This meter does not seem that accurate. 0.5 and 1, which doesn't make sense. Not that effective. This hasn't been the most conclusive and mostly been a waste of time. Piece of junk. So after that really crappy one, a little bit of an upgrade here. I'm gonna get some actual numbers that mean something. This UV meter measures the amount of UV radiation it receives in units of microwatts per square centimeter. So you get about 9,500, just unexposed, and then just through the tape, 7,000. Scotch tape just by itself, not horrible sunscreen. And to find out how store-bought sunscreens actually work, I have 4 SPF, 15 SPF, 30 SPF, and 50. The 4 SPF is 2,500. 15 SPF is about 100, I guess. That one's really low. Let's get about 30. Got some on the thing. I think it's a little hard to measure because of its streakiness. All right, let's try some of mine. Try the combined one next, how well it did overall, and then we'll uh, test each individual component and see how much each one was contributing. Say, I have it about 250. That's actually fairly decent. Maybe 10 SPF? Let's try just a straight zinc oxide. This isn't working super great. Let's go with a very thick one. <laughs> That's probably doing about 200 maybe, at best. Let's try some aloe. This one's fairly thick, but it's actually doing pretty good. 150. This is almost better than the zinc oxide. Now let's try the raspberry oil. 275. Fairly decent as well. Coconut oil. That is not doing much. 31,000. Not much better than just the tape itself. All right, that's probably the worst one, 6,000. My numbers aren't the most accurate due to the issues of not being able to get a consistent thickness, but should give a decent idea of the approximate effectiveness. But overall, I'm surprised it's actually somewhat effective. I would estimate it give you maybe around 10 SPF, which is definitely better than nothing. It's also worth mentioning that I retested a few of the ingredients later and got much worse results, meaning the protection they offer might be short-lived. While successful and able to provide some protection, I think I'd rather stick with your regular store-bought brand. So we weren't able to return this uh, UV detector. It was kind of worthless. So we're gonna give it away. So. Well, now I broke it. And it totally still works. So we're gonna give it away. So if you want this worthless piece of junk, leave a comment saying you want this worthless piece of junk. That being said, it does have other features. It has a clock. So leave a comment and we'll mail it out to somebody. This episode involved a lot of travel and incorporated our brand new workshop we just moved into. And as you can see, we're still working on setting it up. Our content is very difficult to make. We try to produce a very high quality content for this channel and it involves a lot of work, a lot of sweat, literal blood and perseverance. We try to put a lot into our videos and not all of them end up getting a lot of views. And it's really frustrating because every video we do tries to tell a really interesting story that you also learn something about. I hope everybody who enjoys these videos are interested in watching all the other videos. Uh, and if you are, you should check the notification bell and uh, watch all of our videos. Otherwise, we're gonna be kind of forced to have to do more clickbaity things that just kills me inside. So I hope I don't have to do that.